What's up blockheads? Today we're working on the Honda Grom and doing the much needed first service on it. So it's not going to be like a complete first service like if you went to the dealership where they're going to clean out like the oil spinner and stuff like that. But this video I'm just going to basically be walking through showing you guys how to do an oil change. It's incredibly easy on the Grom because there's no oil filter. There's just like a little screen that you have to pull and clean out. It's pretty quick and straightforward. So yeah, let's uh, let's get to it, roll the intro, and we'll get to changing the oil on this beast. All right, yeah, so oil change on the Honda Grom. This is a 2018. Uh, it has about 900 something miles on it, I think. What's it got? Uh, 992, so pretty much a thousand miles on this bike. It is recommended for the first service to basically change the oil, perform the first like complete service at 500 miles. So I have gone a little bit over that, but it's a Honda Grom. <laughs> it's a freaking Honda engine. So, you know, a little 125 CC. I procrastinated a bit, but it's about time that I get around to doing it just because I freaking love this bike. Um, I treat it like, you know, do a lot of like off-roading with it. You know, it's got the knobbies. Um, there's a lot of maintenance that I need to do to it now that we're at a thousand miles. So uh, it does need that first service. I do need to clean out the oil spinner. Um, I actually have an oil pump that I need to install on it, and uh, I've got some new rear brake pads, I've got some spools, chain adjusters, I've got a new chain for it, I've got a bunch of stuff that um, we're going to be doing how-to videos on this thing in the coming months, so you guys be on the lookout for those. If you guys are interested in all that, be sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that bell icon as well so it sends you notifications of all that. For this video, it's just going to be the oil change, so in order to do that, we need to uh, loosen this case on the side, which is going to be the bolts here. There are a couple behind this right rear set uh, that I'm going to be uh, needing to get to. Now you can get to it with, you know, just like a long socket or a wrench. I'm just gonna remove it though, because it's only three bolts here, here, and here, and then you can just kind of fold it out of the way. It'll give you much easier access to removing the case. After we loosen the case up, we're gonna use, there's a plug on the bottom, which I'll show you guys, that we're gonna use to drain the oil. And then after oil is drained, uh, we remove this out we pull the screen, clean that, and then replace it, replace the case, and then fill it up with oil. So for me, I went by Cycle Gear and I picked up this Maxima Racing Oil. It is a uh, performance engine oil for four stroke. Uh, I think the manual says 10W30. Um, we're doing 10W40 just because, it, I mean, it's not that big a deal. It's a 125cc. It's a Grom. You guys are gonna hear that often. It's a Grom. So yeah, I'm just using the uh, a 10W40. It is 100% synthetic uh, ester formula. So you guys can pick that up at like Cycle Gear. I will drop some links down in the description below if you guys wanna pick up some oil as well. Um, yeah, I'll drop a couple different options. Performance OEM guaranteed. And as you guys can see, Honda is one of those. So there you go. It's a small engine, so it does only take one quart. So that's uh, that's all you'll need right there. Anyways, let's get to uh, taking this off, loosening the case, and draining this thing. We got those foot controls basically raised up out of the way, which gives us easier access to bolts here, 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 and on the bottom. So we're gonna basically be loosening up those. Before I forget, you're gonna wanna detach the clutch cable from this piece here that goes into this case. Do that, just press forward, and then you're gonna wander it around the back. Just like that, easy enough. So at this point, we're gonna to wanna to undo the oil drain plug right there. And then once you do that, we'll have oil coming down, dropping into the pan. Before I do that, however, just so it's not as much of a mess, I am going to wrap the exhaust with some foil just so it doesn't get all over the exhaust. Now, if you have the stock exhaust, it'll probably be a little different for you. I don't think the stock exhaust wraps around, coils around underneath there like this one does. So depending on what exhaust you have, you might not need to do this part, but since I have this one that uh, goes right underneath, I do. All 
All right, we're gonna let that drain for a bit. Go ahead and remove the dipstick just to make sure that there's no vacuum, you know, within that and the oil can drain out. As soon as that's done, we'll come back, remove the case, pull the screen, clean that out, make sure the gasket's all good and continue from there. Eventually. All right, so that's pretty much done draining. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of the bolts out and pull that out. We've got all the bolts laid out. Now I laid them out in order of how they kind of came around. Pretty sure the 17 has nine bolts, so the 18 has 10 bolts. So it's gonna be 10 bolts there. Yours probably won't look like that. It'll probably just be another silver one if you have stock. Uh, that's the one that came with the replacement for the crash protection, so it is a little longer. At this point though, once you have all those bolts out, you've got the clutch line free, and you have the line here free. All right, there we go, that is off. So at this point, if you wanna clean the oil spinner, you're gonna go ahead and remove those three bolts there, take that off, and then clean on the inside of that. I'm not doing that this time around. I'll probably do it on the next service. But at this point, you do have a little screen right here, which we're gonna remove that, right? So pull it out and inspect the screen. Wow, that is a big old chunk of something. That's crazy. <laughs> Lots more uh, little pieces in there as well. But yeah, so that's the little screen filter. So we're gonna clean that off, put it back on. Then we're gonna put the cover back on and pour some oil back into it. That's pretty wild. I didn't expect to find a big old chunk like that. All right, so we have the oil strainer screen all cleaned out. Now, one thing I did notice is that it is actually not evenly shaped and it has kind of like a lip. So I was kind of curious as to which direction it goes back in there. So I busted out the service manual. It says engine oil strainer screen. Uh, install the oil strainer screen with its tapered side facing the crankcase side and thinner edge facing up as shown. So like that right there. So if we look at it, it's basically gonna be like that. So insert back in like that. Easy enough. After that, you're just gonna check the case here, make sure that the gasket is good and that it's not torn or anything like that, in which case this one looks great, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the dipstick because as we were taking it off, it did get hung up on that a little bit. Go ahead and take that out. And then we're just gonna put that back on, retighten the screws, put the drain plug back in, and fill it up with some oil. All right, we got the case back on, everything tightened down. So now you just need to replace the oil drain plug, which is here. We're gonna clean that off. All right, so taking a look at the service manual here, uh, just to let you guys know, the torque spec on the oil drain bolt is 18 foot-pounds. All right, so now we're to the point of putting oil back into the engine, so we're gonna remove the dipstick. Grab yourself a funnel, throw that in. And you're gonna grab your oil. So this is one liter, 33.8 fluid ounces. Fill the engine with recommended engine oil. So the engine oil capacity for just at draining is 0.9 liters or 0.9 US quarts. At disassembly, if you totally disassemble the engine, which we did not do, is 1.1 liters or 1.2 US quarts. So we're looking for 0.9 liters or 0.9 quarts. We've got that right here since this is one liter. So we're basically gonna have to put 90% of this into there. We're gonna fill it up and then we'll just check the dipstick level. So we've got a level thing on this side. Yeah. All right, so that's nearly all of it. So we're gonna let that settle and then check it with the dipstick. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention at this point, since we are filling it with oil, go ahead and make sure that there's no leaks. Check around the bottom of the case and uh, the bolt, you know, just to make sure you don't have any oil dripping, which looks like we are all good. Yep, all good. 
once again from the service manual. For the uh, oil level inspection, it says to start the engine and let it idle for three to five minutes. Stop the engine and wait two to three minutes, then hold the motorcycle in an upright position, remove the oil filler cap, wipe it, and then insert the oil filler cap dipstick without screwing it in and remove it to check the oil level. If the level is below or near the lower level line, on the dipstick, add the recommended oil to the upper level line. Level line on the dipstick for the Grom is freaking tiny. I mean, you guys can see that it's not very, not very long. So we're pretty much just aiming to hit that. So I'm gonna replace this. I'm gonna let the bike run for three to five minutes, make sure there's no leaks, and then let it set for two to three minutes, remove the dipstick, wipe it, check the level, and go from there. Let the bike run, turn it off. It's been setting for about three to four minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this and check the level. All right, so the oil is pretty low. It's at the lower level line and it says that if it's at the lower level line to add oil until it's at the upper level line. So that's what we're gonna do. Go ahead and add some more and then we'll let it run again. We'll check the level again. Also just to note, whenever I'm starting this, I'm opening the garage. Don't start your bike in a closed garage. Make sure it has proper ventilation because you don't want uh, to die from carbon monoxide. All right, so you guys can see the difference now. It is to that upper upper fill line. So that's perfect. So put the dipstick back in, tighten back down, clean up. As you can see, I put the uh, foot controls or the rear sets back on, but that is it. Oh yeah, and to uh, get the bike to stand more upright, I just used a, a wood block under the kickstand. You can use uh, some like rear stands like those over there on the wall too. But yeah, that's... That's how you do an oil change and clean the filter. Well, not filter, how you clean that, uh, the oil screen rather. Now, if you wanna do that without cleaning the screen, which it doesn't really take that much longer, so I would usually recommend cleaning the screen, especially if it's a couple of your earlier services. But if you wanna do it without cleaning that screen, you can leave the side cover on and just remove the oil drain plug to streamline the process. If you're only doing oil, remove the oil level dipstick, take out the drain plug, let it drain, replace the drain plug, fill it with oil, let it run, do the process of checking the level like I did. But like I said, I would recommend, I mean, it doesn't take that much longer. It's not that many more steps to uh, clean off that little screen and uh, keeps your bike running well. So but that's pretty much it. It's a pretty easy job, pretty straightforward stuff. So if you guys do have any questions, be sure to post them up in the comments down below. Uh, like I said, be sure to pay attention to those torque specs. Just as a disclaimer, I'm not a certified mechanic. I'm just a guy who likes working on his bikes in the garage. As you can see, I got a couple projects going on here, giving this bike away after I build it. So if you guys wanna get in on that, check out Patreon patreon.com slash blockhead moto. I actually already gave away a Grom, built it out, gave that away. So the uh, Harley Davidson Sportster Iron 883 is next up. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. If it was helpful, be sure to hit that like button. If you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button as well. Hit that bell icon so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. Until next time, you guys ride safe out there. Stay vigilant. Catch you guys on the next one. Deuces.